Hello once again, I am Jim Ducart with TND How Videos. Today we are in the Houston suburb of Pasadena, Texas at a substation where we will be watching our participating utility, Centerpoint Energy, demonstrate underground cut-around splicing. This video is sponsored by Burns and McDonnell. Now if you saw our earlier videos on the underground cut-around, we're in the same location, same scene. You see here is the manhole that the underground cut around is taking place within and we will see the splicing portion of that here momentarily. But first, as with our other cut around video, we're going to start above ground and show you that some of the work's taking place above ground here where they're preparing these cutout sections of cable that are going to be brought down in and spliced into the existing cable in the manhole. You may recognize some of these cable ends or cable pieces as we go through the video here. So let's set the scene here in the manhole. You see the three cables here, the existing cables that the previous video just showed how we cut them. They're phase taped red, white, and blue for A, B, and C phase. Here are those cables, uh, the white or B phase cable first, and then red and blue A and C put up against the wall. And now we can see being passed down into the manhole, one of these cable sections that was being worked on up above. This one is marking tape white or B phase. And here we see them taking that B phase cable section, or it's also called a cutout, and putting it up against the wall, trimming it to the right size. And they will do the same with cable cutouts for the A and C phase. Here you see A phase, which is phase taped red. Next, we use this scoring tool to score the outer jacket of the existing cable in the manhole. And then go ahead and peel back that outer jacket to reveal what are called concentric neutrals. Those are those copper bands twisted around the cable. And we can measure and mark an inch and a quarter into those uh, flat concentric neutrals, put a metal band around it, and we can actually break these off. And you can see the end result is the end of the cable with no neutrals on it. And now we're going to fix some mesh tape for use later to connect some feathered neutrals, which we'll see a little bit later in the video. And now we can measure back a specific distance from the end of the cable along this black semicon, semiconductive layer. It's called the semicon. Mark there. And then we use a scoring tool for that to also score and then peel away the semicon layer. And as that is scored and peeled away, we then reveal the pink or salmon colored insulation layer of the cable. And so the end result of that will be this exposed portion of insulation. And then we have another cutting tool that will cut away the insulation without uh, scoring or marking the cables inside. And if you notice, there's a rulered uh, bracket or L-shaped bracket at the end that tells them just how far down on the insulation to go. Then they peel that insulation back to expose just the right amount of exposed conductor for the splice. Now it's time for a wire brushing of that bare conductor once more. And then he's going to hand him what's called a shear bolt connector, which will be slipped over one side of this cable here and tighten down the bolts on that shear bolt connector initially by hand just to put it on that one side of the cable. Because the next step will be to take this cold shrink termination which you see I'm holding here and slide this over the cutout cable, the part of the cable that's being connected into this shear bolt connector. See I'm sliding it right over that prepared cutout section there and then a wire brush of the exposed conductor of the cutout because this is where we make the actual splice itself, inserting the exposed conductor of the cutout into the shear bolt connector here on the existing cable. This will create the splice for this cut around. And then next we'll take a cordless ratchet and tighten down the shear bolts. The reason they're called shear bolts is as you apply the right amount of torque, the bolt head by design snaps or shears right off, giving you a flat surface. 
And next, by hand, we sand down the surface of that shear bolt connector, wipe down the cable, add some installation compound to make sure the cold shrink splice adheres to the insulation on this splice. Because now with that prepared, we can slide the cold shrink termination over the splice itself. And as you see, as they do this, they're going to start peeling away these white plastic bands on the end. That is the cold shrink itself. Rather than using heat, taking this hard plastic out causes the jacket to collapse around the splice and the cable. Now the cold shrink also comes with these feathered concentrics you see here, which are now being peeled back and connected to that mesh tape we saw earlier. And using a stainless steel band, we will connect the feathered concentrics to the splice on each side. And as we move on back down the cable here and pull away the rest of this cold shrink plastic, you can see that we see the fire and arc proofing tape, the white tape already going over this cable. That will eventually cover the entire cable, including the whole splice. And here then is the completion of our job. The three phases, A, B, and C, all completely fire and arc proof taped in white and set up against the wall. This is the cut around. Remember these cables used to go through the middle of this manhole. You have now seen our TND How video on underground cutaround splicing. Our participating utility was Centerpoint Energy, and this video was sponsored by Burns and McDonald. I am Jim Ducart with TND How Videos. Thank you, as always, for watching.